Hi everyone and welcome to my living room. Today I'm going to show you how you can build this light that can be controlled through Home Assistant. The light has a 3D printed base that we've weighted down with plaster and it uses a T8 styled LED light that can either be pointed at the corner so it reflects light from it or it can be pointed in the direction where you need to have the light. And being that that's a quite heavy base, it's quite stable and durable. To start working on the lamp, there are a few components that we're gonna need and the first one is the T8 style LED light tube that we're gonna use to house in a 3D printed enclosure that I designed and I'm gonna talk you through it just in a while. We're gonna need a power lead so we can connect it to the mains because this is mains powered T8 uh, LED light and we're gonna need one of these uh, mini switches that I'm using with my home assistant setup. This one in particular is a Zigbee type, so the whole light will be controlled through Home Assistant. Now probably the most important component of this whole build will be this base that I 3D printed. This is a 3D printed cube measuring 12 by 12 by 12 centimeters, so it's all equal on all sides, but it's printed without its bottom layer, so I've added a modifier in my 3D printing software so it doesn't print the bottom layer. So this was printed like this. And there is also a section on the back where we're gonna house the module. So this will sit like this. I could have added a bit more space to that, but it's a nice tight press fit. Then the cables will come from this side, connect to the module and on the inside there is a channel that goes all the way to the back and connects to the hole here on the top. Once we are ready to connect everything, the idea is that we're gonna connect the wires to the light and this will then press fit into here where the wires will come from the back and this could stay upright. Now, one of the problem with it staying upright is because this is extremely light, so we need to fix that. Now you probably already noticed about the infill on this one. This is a special type of infill called gyroid that actually makes this entire space inside the cube being one whole space. So the idea is that we can mix some gypsum or plaster and we can pour it in into the cube. So once it solidifies, it adds a lot of weight and this will then sit upright and won't be so tippy because of the height of the light that we have on top. Now I don't really know how watertight this 3D print will be but I hope that it won't lick. There's only one way to find out. Before I start to mix in the plaster and pour it in, I want to thank today's sponsor which is PCBWay. Looking for a fast reliable 3D printing for your prototypes or custom parts? PCBWay offers more than just top tier 3D printing. They are your complete solution for advanced manufacturing. Using industrial grade 3D printers, PCBWay delivers FDM, SLA, SLS and metal 3D printing options, giving you the ideal mix of strength, detail and speed. But they don't stop there. They also specialize in CSC machining, sheet metal fabrication, injection molding and full PCB production and assembly, all in one place. No need to coordinate with multiple vendors. PCBWay brings you consistent quality, great prices and quick turnaround, whether you're building a one-off prototype or scaling up to full production. Their online quoting tool makes ordering simple where you just upload your file and get a quote instantly. From aerospace to healthcare, innovators trust PCBWay to turn ideas into reality. Head to pcbway.com today and discover how smooth manufacturing can be. Now, given that there is not a lot of working time with plaster, I have a batch that I think will be just a bit less than what I need. Maybe just another one like this. I have my water ready and I also have my vibrating tool without any sandpaper so I can use it to vibrate the whole thing so we fill the voids inside. I'm gonna start by mixing in some of the plaster uh, with water and we'll see what happens. Now we want this to be relatively wet, so we can pour it in. Okay, let's see. It would have probably been easier to start the other way around, but I had no clue how much water to add, so I can make a runny 
substance. Let's see how this goes. Okay, so this feels like there are no clumps inside. Let's start filling in the, the base. And you can see that it goes all the way down. Okay, I'm actually gonna need a lot more than this. Let me add just a bit of water. Okay, so batch number one is in. Let's vibrate it a bit. Yep, looks like halfway full. Let's make another batch. Okay, so that last pour was a slightly different uh, plaster because I ran out of the one I had before. It had like a minute or so to solidify just a tiny bit and I'm gonna use uh, just an off cut from my laser cutter to scrape out any excess that I have on top while it's still wet. Okay, so that looks about right. I'm gonna leave this to solidify. And in the meantime, we can start working on the wiring. Now for the lights, there is really one thing that you should keep in mind with this project is to get the light that has both life and neutral from the same side. Like this one, you could see here, it's marked as one side power input. So meaning that one of these pins where I've added this cable clamp has live going to the light and the other one is neutral going to the light instead of having them separated on both sides like I have on my basement lights. If you see here on them, I only have one wire coming on each side and if we go all the way on the other end, that's the other wire. Uh, you need to have the type of lights where both of the connections are on the same light because we're gonna connect to them and we're gonna have the cables going into the base. On the other side, these uh, lights are just connecting these pins together because there are multiple ways how you can connect them uh, into the original T8 style enclosure. If we look at the enclosure here, the encasing that it came, uh, you could just leave the wiring as it is and connect the tube instead of the T8 where you're gonna use the magnetic ballast as well as an LED starter. I've never heard before of an LED starter but this light came with one and it looks just as a regular incandescent starter but if we open it up inside is just a 1 amp fuse that is added in line with the light so it can make the connection. So as you can see that starter will just connect the wire instead of having the fluorescent starter as per before. You could decide to eliminate the wiring all uh, on its own. So we have just a regular live and neutral input as we're gonna use in this project. And for us, the wiring will be even simpler because we're gonna use this smart switch to control the light. Um, the power lid will connect on one end and then we're gonna have just a wire coming in from the switch to go to the LED light. And because this will be exposed, so you're gonna ha have the possibility to manually trigger it and turn it on. And we're gonna also be able to trigger it via home assistant. So I'm gonna connect the two wires here on the side. Let me loosen up the terminals. 
So the brown wire from the input cable will come to the live in and the blue one will come to neutral in. From the output cable, the red one will be live out and the black one will be negative out or neutral out. Keep in mind, this needs to be disconnected while you're handling it. For testing, I'm gonna also connect the light right now, even though we need to connect it later and fit the wire through the base, but we can go in, connect it, make sure it works, and then we can also add it to Home Assistant. This doesn't really matter what side you add it to, so one side is live and the other one is neutral. Okay, so there we have it. Let's connect it to power. Okay, so connecting it for the first time. Okay, that turned on and it's now in pairing mode. So let's try the Home Assistant app and let me record the screen so you could watch as well. Opening Home Assistant and I'm gonna go to settings. I need to do some updates, but I'll do them later. Go to my Zigbee setup. Within devices, I can choose to add a device. Now this one is relatively far from where my other Zigbee gateways uh, is and other Zigbee devices. So I'm not really sure if it's gonna be identified, but let's see. No, nope, I don't think it's gonna recognize the device because it's, I think, too far. I'm currently two stories below where my rest of the Zigbee devices are. So we're gonna have to go upstairs and connect it there. For now, we can test if the light will turn on, uh, which it does. So the module is working. We need to get it closer to the rest of the Zigbee devices. Now, one of the concerns that I have for pouring plaster inside a 3D printed mold uh, or a case like this is that there is a risk that there is a high enough temperature inside that would melt the plastic. This is now relatively warm to the touch, but nothing too serious. There is not like too much uh, heating going on because plaster and cement and other things like that they are curing with a chemical reaction so they develop a bit of a temperature but this seems okay and it's not deforming the plastic in any way okay i'm here now at my kitchen table and let's try to add the device now because i do have zigbee devices nearby and you could see it was immediately recognized. Let's name it as corner lamp. And it will be in the living room. So now if we go in, we can see that we can control it through Home Assistant, which was the goal how to set it up. Now, all we need to do is to wait for the plaster to cure in the base and we can start assembling everything. And it's now about 24 hours later, this is rock solid and we can flip, flip it up. There seems to be no leakage on it. There are some staining that I can wipe off from handling this. Um, actually, I can see some leakage of plaster inside, but I think we should be able to easily clear that up. So, and we have it here. Yep, that's good to go. Now on to wiring, and this is now way a lot heavier. As a matter of fact, I have this kitchen scale here, so let's try and weigh it. Okay, that's zero. Okay, so two and a half kilos, which should be pretty stable for the lamp.
Okay, now for the final assembly, I've disconnected the wiring from the light and we need to pass this wire through here so it comes up from the top. Let me try and fish it out. Okay, and we can flip it so we can push this through here. Okay, that's now in. It will be, I'll design a small lid that goes here. Let's trim this to something smaller and strip it and we can actually connect the light here and finally let me check if I have enough height which I don't we can just press it in here Barely fitting to the ceiling here. So that last thing pushes inside and now this holds it upright. And you can see this almost touches the ceiling that I have here in the basement. And if we go down, this is the base now as it sits on my workbench. Now let's go to the computer so we can design this piece and also so that we can add a cap there so we can hide the exposed contacts. Here on the end, I 3D printed a cap that I added some holes for ventilation, but they will be covering the exposed contacts even though they are not connected electrically to anything, but this uh, looks nicer. And here in the back where the cables are, I also 3D printed a lid and I added it there so you can't touch the wires that are connected to life. And to turn it on or off, you can use the switch, which is from the module, or of course you can use Home Assistant. And now here are some beauty shots of the light finally installed in my living room. I'm really liking how this looks and it adds to the entire fill, but I would for sure need to add one more so I can make the whole thing symmetrical and have the lights on both sides from my TV console. The base looks elegant and it definitely can fit with any space, but if you want, since this is 3D printed, you could also paint it to some other color to match your interior. And with that, I'm gonna end the video right here. If you're interested in getting the files, then let me know down in the comments and I'll probably post the links to the files. Make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any of the future videos. If you have any questions, leave them down in the video comments. Over here on the TV, you have the video where I build the LoRa antenna, so you might want to check that. And I'll see you all in the next one. Cheers.